So at the end of this practical series, you should be able to have a very good knowledge of SQL, that structured query language. And I've actually prepared a series of exercises that we are going to be going through, as you can see right here. So there are about uh, 50 exercises I've prepared. As we solve these problems, we are going to be learning along the line as we go, uh, as you see here. So that's the best way to learn. And at the end of the day, we are going to have good knowledge of SQL. It's designed for beginners and also for data scientists and for programmers who want to have good knowledge of SQL. Because as a data scientist and as a programmer, you should be able to know how to select data, to filter data, to be able to, to query data stored in a database. And that's exactly what we are going to be doing here. I've also obtained a cheat sheet. So this cheat sheet, we are going to be using it to make reference when necessary. And also I have a reference material here that we are going to be checking uh, to verify that our solution is correct. So this place here is the workspace. This workspace, you can get to it online by simply going to livesql.oracle.com. So open your browser and go to livesql.oracle.com. Okay, so I'm going to click on start coding now and it opens up the worksheet. Again, I want to recommend that if you are joining me for the first time, I recommend you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any update from me. Again, if you have any challenges whatsoever, please leave it to me uh, below as a comment and I'm going to respond to you. So let's go immediately to see what is here is, is in the schema. Schema is simply a collection of database objects belonging to a particular user. So the schema we are going to be using is a HR uh, schema, more or less like a department in a company. And it has countries, departments, uh, employees, and so on. So we are going to be exploring all these database object tables uh, in this course or in this series. All right, so let's go to uh, question one. Let me go all the way back to question one. And question one says determine the structure of all database tables. So basically, you can simply come here. When you click on schema, it takes you here. You can actually check. Uh, these tables one by one. For instance, if I click on the employees table, I can actually see uh, what the employees table is made of, is, is made up of, or the structure of the employee table. And now you can see that it has employee ID, first name, last name, email, and so on. But now this is not what we want to do. We want to actually write SQL queries. So let's go back to the worksheet and actually write a query to do exactly the same thing. All right, so in SQL worksheet, worksheet, to select or describe the employee table, you can simply say uh, describe, describe hr.employees. So I told you that hr is a schema. So you always attach the schema name before the table name. So if you say describe hr.employees, and you can actually click on this run button to run it, and it tells you about the employees table okay so it says it has employee id first name last name email phone number hair date and so on all right one thing you can do again is you can also say select select star from all tables so you want to query and get all the tables uh, in this database so if you say select star from all underscore tables and run it is going to give you all the tables in this database uh, as you can see, the table names and some of these tables, we actually don't need it. They are system tables. And if you scroll down, it tells you that we have 50 rows, but we have more. But I can say where the table name, sorry, or where the owner, so we are the owner, where, so I'm now kind of filtering it to select only a table belonging to the HR schema. So where owner is equal to HR. So if I run this code now, it should be able to give me all the tables belonging to the HR schema. And these are actually the tables we are going to be working with today. So you can use the describe command to actually see the structure of this table. I'm moving on to number two. The number two says display the names and salaries of all employees. If you look at the employees tables, it contains uh, column like names and salary and other things. So to display the name and salary of all employees, I can simply just say select first name and salary from hr.employees. That's all. So, and that's gonna display the name and uh, salary of all employees. And then you can actually add the last name if you want, but, but they told us names. So 
Uh, we can actually choose either first name or last name and that is fine. I'm moving on to number two, number three, because as we move on, it's going to become a bit tasking as we go. So sit tight and let's see how it plays out. Question number three says, display the last name and salary of employees earning more than $12,000. All right, so let's say any more than $12,000. Okay, so I'm going to uh, first name, last name, and let's just run this. In this case, we are displaying all the employees and the salaries they earn. But now to now uh, filter for those who earn more than $12,000, you simply use a where clause where salary is greater than $12,000. So this is a where clause and you use it to filter data for data that meets certain criteria. In this case, it's where the salary is greater than and use a greater symbol, greater than symbol to specify that. And in this case, this query here is going to return the first name, last name, and salary for all employees who earn more than $12,000. I'm moving on to number four. Display the last name and department, the last name and department number of employee number 176. So last name and department ID. So I'm going to say select last name and department ID. Now we are going to filter for employee with employee ID of 176. In this tutorial, employee is employee number is what is referred to as employee ID. So I'm going to say we are employee ID is equal to 176. When it's when it is a number, you just write it exactly the way it is. So I'm going to run this and it's going to show us Taylor has employee ID of 176. So to, just to make sure you can just say add employee ID to the list of select, uh, to the select columns here. Again, if I'm a bit too fast, maybe you can just reduce the speed of the video to maybe 0 0.75 or maybe you can pause the video at some point, try to write this query yourself and then see how I write it and it becomes clearer. So I'm moving on to question number five. Display the last name and salary for all employees whose salary is not in the range of 5,000 to 12,000. Okay, last name and salary. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to display last name and salary and we don't need the employee ID. So I'm going to just take out the employee ID from here. And now we are going to filter for where the salary. So in this case, you need to use the between keywords. The keyword is between. So where salary, salary between are 5,000 and 12,000. But wait a minute, they say where the salary is not in this range. Well, that is also simple. Where salary is not between. So say not between and that solves the problem. So I'm going to run now and that's going to give us uh, the results we want. So in this case, we have the last name and salary. And if you look at the list, there is no salary between 5,000 and 12,000. I hope you are making some progress. I'm hope, I hope this is not being too difficult for now. I recommend you also make notes of these keywords I'm mentioning, like between, select, where, all these uh, clauses you are clauses it's called sql clause right that's the name all right so let's move on to the next one question number six display the last name the job id and start date for employees with last name of matos and taylor all right so display the 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 the, the last name last name and uh, job ID, so job ID is job ID and hire date, I think hire date, uh, start date is called hire date. Again, you can use describe hr.employees so that you can see what columns are there. Okay, where uh, the last name has a last name of Matos and Taylor. So we are going to be using the membership operator here. So how does the membership operator work? It tells you where the records belongs to this member. It's a member of such a of this list. So we have a list of two items, Matos and Taylor. So where um, 
last name, last name, in, so we are going to use in, which is a membership operator, and specify in brackets like this, with single quotes, and you specify the names you want to uh, check if they belong to. Uh, matters comma, and you specify Taylor, okay? And they say we have to order by, so now you are learning about order by, order by clause, that's what it is called, order by uh, higher dates. So higher date. And it's going to be assigning order. I mean, I'm going to just add ASC, right? So that solves the problem. Take some time to get your head around it. So I'm going to just run it and hopefully it gives us exactly what we want. So we have the last name here is going to be only Matos and Taylor. Another way to write this query, let me just show you in case you don't want to use uh, membership. You can say we are last name um, equal to my Cause, uh, or last name. There is a more robust way of writing it, but it's better you know two ways of doing it. And in case there is one that is easier for you to do, so mass, where last name is equal to Marcus or last name is equal to Taylor. And this is also going to give us the correct answer or the, the same result we have. All right, so you've learned about assigning order, you've learned about or operator. So keep in mind, we're going to be using these things more as we go along. So I'm moving now to question number seven. Question number seven says, display the last name and department number of all employees in the departments 20 or 50 in assigning a part of a vertical order of name. Okay, now you've learned about membership operator and that is something we can use. So we have last name and department number. So let's just take out this one from department number, department ID, uh, where the department is 20 or 50. So I'm going to use, in this case, I'm going to use membership. I can use or keyword. So I'm going to say where department ID in in brackets, it's going to be 20, uh, comma 50. So where we have any of these departments and order by alphabetical order of name. So I'm going to say we order by last name. Order by last name is going to be assigning order. So I'm going to say ASC. Again, if you don't use ASC, uh, it's also going to be default ascending order as in if you don't use a default ascending or descending order is going to use by default ascending order so i'm going to run this code now and it's going to give us exactly what we want so we have this ascending order at at, at Kingston, bell visa bow this arena ascending order we have last name and department id for all these employees and we have here you have only 50 and 20 right here all right, so number eight, I recommend you try to do this yourself, pause the video, do this yourself, and then see how I do it, right? That makes some sense. Display the last name and job titles of all employees who do not have a manager. Oh, who do not have a manager? How do we know whether an employee has a manager or not? If an employee record includes a manager ID, then he has a manager. But if he doesn't include a manager ID, then he doesn't have a manager, right? Okay, so we have the last name and the job ID, the job ID or job titles, right? Okay, let's see, job ID of employees. Now, we, they are not telling us to arrange it or to sort it or to order it. So, where manager ID is null. So, where there is no manager ID specified like this, where manager ID is null, and I'm going to just execute. And it's gonna give us, I think, only one record because this is a, is, a, is a department. So it's just one manager in this department. So we expect to get one record, but wait a minute. The question says job title. Uh, so I don't know if the job title is included in the employees table. So let's describe the employee table to see if the job title is included there. So I'm going to say describe hr.employees and let's run it and see if the job title is there. If the job title is not there, then that means we have to do a join to another table to obtain the job title. 
All right, so you can see that the job title is not there. What, what we have there is the job ID. Uh, that is the challenge we have. Uh, all right, so we have to obtain the job uh, title from the jobs table, which is another table uh, different from this one. I'm going to pause here so that we kind of, in the next part, I'm going to now teach you about joins because now starts uh, number eight. So we have to now do joins. So please uh, stay with me and also subscribe if you've not subscribed. And also leave me a comment if you have any comments uh, or any challenges whatsoever following. So we'll see you in the next part.